Close to Allah, Allah opens, Allah opens the doors. In Surah Al-Layl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who believe and do good deeds and they spend and Allah loves them, what does Allah do? Allah makes them do things that will be easy. Allah makes easy for them that which is good. Allah makes easy for them the path that will earn His pleasure. But those who do evil, those who are stingy when it comes to wealth, niggardly, they do not spend, they do not give from what Allah has given them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we make difficult for them. Or we make easy for them the path of difficulty. Wherever there's difficulty, Allah says, فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ usra." We make easy for that person the path of difficulty, hardship. That's the only path that they follow. This is a result of the sins of the person. And I've explained to you both types of sin. Then another very, very interesting, powerful, scary point. Very scary meaning, it's something that will, you know, cause alarm. If you do not fear Allah, you begin to fear everything besides Allah. If you have transgressed against Allah, you begin to become worried about the people. You begin to become worried about the rest. Every time you have the fear of Allah and you have fulfilled the instruction of Allah, Allah suffices for you. Allah is sufficient. You have the fear of Allah, you're doing everything correct. There's no harm, you're not worried. You come into the masjid, Allahu Akbar, your concentration is salah is to its maximum, to the best you can. The reason is, you have nothing to worry about. What did you do? Nothing wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I come here, I'm such a happy person, Allahu Akbar, and that's it. I don't fear anyone besides Allah. You will always have a person saying a thing or two that's negative, but none of us can be saved from that because it's part of the test of Allah for both the one who was spoken about and the one who's speaking. But when a person sins, they're worried. They're not fearing, fearing of Allah. They are not fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They come, they, hey, what will this person say? Did that one see me? A person who steals, for example, he thinks that someone must have seen him. How, you know, this person might know. That person might find out. A person who has stolen, a person who commits adultery, a person who has done anything wrong, he's worried about humankind more than he's worried about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a direct effect of the evil that a person does. Notice I'm still saying a believer because at the end of the day, we do believe. My brothers and sisters, like I say, I'm repeating it a second time. The doors of repentance are open always for as long as it doesn't get to the end. We are still living. We're still breathing. We haven't yet got to Sakarat. We haven't yet got to Gargara, meaning the point of death of each one of us. And the world is not yet come to an end. So we can turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, the more we become conscious of Allah, the less we will fear the rest. And the less we are conscious of Allah, the more we begin to fear the rest. You know, a very, very powerful point as well is when a person begins to sin, the devil tampers with them more. هَلْ أُنَبِّئُكُمْ عَلَى مَنْ تَنَزَّلُ الشَّيَاطِينَ تَنَزَّلُ عَلَى كُلِّ أَفَّاكٍ أَثِيمٍ Surah Al-Shu'ara Allah says, do you want to know who the jinn come in trouble? Do you want to know who the shayateen come in trouble? They trouble those who are liars and those who are sinful. Afakin Athim, you want to lie without even thinking, don't worry. You might get away with it for a while, but the jinn will come and trouble you, shaitan will come and trouble you, you start hearing things. Don't you read Surah Al Jinn? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladhi waswisu fi sudurin nas. You start getting waswasa, you don't know what's going on, you start hearing a voice. All that is because my brother, my sister, it is the effect of sins that are committed. Turn to Allah, all that will go away. Turn to Allah correctly, all that will go away. Subhanallah, eat that which is halal. If a person eats that which is haram, there is a skittle effect until the person lies depressed. Skittle effect. And that might take 30 years. How long? 30 years. We ate haram 30 years back for a period of two years. It affected us 30 years down the line. Unless we sought the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And that's the third time I'm saying this. Seeking the forgiveness of Allah is extremely important. So my brothers and sisters, if we would like to be protected from shaitan, from his waswasa, from jinn, from being affected by magic and everything else, you need to be obedient to Allah. Fulfill your commands to Allah. A lot of the times people who are affected by all this, you ask them, do you read salah? They say, no, sometimes. Would you fulfill the salah? No, four times a day. Well, the fifth time the devil is actually affecting you. That's what it is. May Allah forgive us. And I ask Allah to grant cure to all those who are struggling and suffering. When we say, have you read the Quran? Have you read Ayatul Kursi? The answer is no. Well, how do you expect to be helped? Allah is telling you, here are bodyguards. I'm giving them to you. All you got to do is open the door and let them in. You haven't even bothered to open the door. It will take you two minutes to read Ayatul Kursi. The door will be open. Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, a very important point that we learn. Then, I have two more points that I'd like to talk about. Number one. A person who sins and doesn't turn to Allah, one of the effects is Allah gives them a very bad death. Very difficult, very bad death. And it's called Su'ul Khatima, which means the end will be very bad. What is a bad death? My brothers and sisters, a bad death is not when you have been shredded to pieces. That's not a bad death. A bad death is to die in a condition that you have forgotten about Allah. That's a bad death. And a good death is even if you are you know, shredded to pieces. I'm sorry to give that example. But if you died remembering Allah, wow. If you died on that day, you had read your salah, subhanallah. If you died on that day, you asked Allah's forgiveness, alhamdulillah. If you died on that day, you opened the Quran in the morning and you read half a page. Wow, good news to you. This, that's a good death. But when a person goes far away from Allah, very, very distant, the last time you opened the Quran was by mistake last Ramadan because I was too embarrassed. The last time you fulfilled your five daily salah was sometime last year in Ramadan. What's that? My brothers and sisters, what type of a death do you expect to have if you were to die right here, right now? Subhanallah. Well, I think we'd all be lucky, wouldn't we? Mashallah. Here, Jumu'ah, beautiful timing. Uh, in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about to fulfill salah. Well, that's a good sign. Some are not bothered to read Jumu'ah. Some, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. They only come for Salatul Eid. Subhanallah. The moon is seen twice a year. Subhanallah. This Eid and that Eid, let that not happen. The last point I want to raise my brothers and sisters is we always do not realize that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us about the punishment of the grave, the punishment of the hereafter as a direct result of the evil that one may commit. This is a topic people don't like to hear. I can't remember when last I heard about the scorpions in the grave, when last I heard about the grave narrowing and crushing the chest and the bones of those who are in it. I can't remember when last I heard of the snakes in the grave. I can't remember when last I heard of the screaming in the grave, such that the Prophet ﷺ says, if man could hear it, they would not want to be buried. That's the hadith. No one likes to hear this. It's the effect of sin. And as for the akhirah and the punishment of hellfire, people don't like to hear it. When people will be ripped to pieces, burnt and made to be drinking that which is absolutely boiling, which destroys the intestines completely and which is then renewed in order to taste the punishment and whatnot. This is just a tip of the iceberg, not an iceberg actually because the ice would help you. But at the same time, my brothers and sisters, the biggest gift we have is Tawbah. Seek Allah's forgiveness and then smile and have hope in the mercy of Allah. Smile, have hope. Life is not just depressing. No, it's not. It will be test. It will be test after test. Definitely. It will be filled with challenges. But by the help of Allah, you will get through every one of those challenges. It might take a year, two years or 10 years or 30 years. Trust me, by the help of Allah, you will get through it. You will keep going. Never lose hope until the end. Right up to the end. وَاعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Worship your Rabb. Keep on worshipping your Rabb. Without losing hope, without becoming despondent. Right up to the point of your death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. May Allah bless us. Like I said, the door of tawbah is open. We seek Allah's forgiveness. We will be protected from all.
Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.